Brother Jeremy's text is Luke 8, 11. The seed is the word of God. And this is Jesus speaking. And he's, he's the one that said this. So we've talked about this before. I wanted to bring to remembrance that how Jesus, when he spoke, he didn't randomly pick objects to compare the word of God to. But in the beginning... When, he, when God was creating things, they created the seed. They created the vegetation the way he did on purpose to reveal his own nature and his own character to his own people and how the kingdom of God works. So by way of introduction, I wanted to consider the main, well, the three main parts of what most seeds contain and how it relates to our understanding of the word of God. The first part of a seed is the seed coat. And the function of a seed coat is to protect the embryo plant inside from injury and to prevent it from drying out. The hardness of the coat makes it difficult to harm the plant that resides inside. So in like manner, the word of God has this hard, this hard layer. It will not germinate or break open unless the conditions are right for it. In the earth, there must be soil, water, the right temperature, oxygen, and light for the seed to sprout. And speaking of spiritual things, uh, there must be an honest and good heart, ministers preaching life-giving sustenance, and God giving insight that we perceive by faith for the word of God to sprout within us. If these conditions are not present, the seed coat will not open or take root. So what I saw in this is we learned that the word of God, God protects his word this way. He's, he, it's kept from those that have not been chosen. The word of God isn't ultimately for the world. It's for his people. Um, the verse right before um, Brother Jeremy's text in 10, it says, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. And so, um, to those, all they, all they ever got was a parable. They didn't get any more than that. Um, again, going back to the seed. When a seed is watered, the seed coat soaks up water and it causes it to swell. And that's what makes it burst open. Amen. Now, for the chosen... When the seed, when the word of God has been scattered and is watered by a brother or sister in Christ, that person cogitates on the truth. And it's like the word swells within them. It gets bigger. And joy bursts upon the soul and life sprouts. The second part of a seed would be the stored food inside the seed. Now the main function of the stored food is for the nourishment of the young plant until it can take root. The seed is sustained by its own food that it already had, is already part of its seed. So we can see the gentleness of God in this. New life must be sustained and cared for for a time before it can care for itself. Mm -hmm. And the new sprout just born by the word of God is also sustained by the word of God. Yeah. Our understanding of God is increased by the same word of God. We continue to ponder what the Lord has said and made known, which still comes to us from the same source. The third part is the actual, the embryo plant, the, the young plant. The new life is what is born out of the seed. It's what springs forth. The plant, is cared, the plant if cared for, will mature and bear fruit of its own kind. The word of God, if allowed to dwell in a, in a person richly, will grow and mature and bear much fruit. Some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. Um, I wanted to give an example to kind of bring these three aspects together. Because as I was seeing this, um, it was if, if you're reading the scriptures, or if you're listening to a brother preach, and you're expecting to receive from the Lord, these things are going on all of a sudden you'll have a thought will just burst Amen. upon you. Amen. That, it's like seed was scattered. Mm -hmm. The conditions of the heart were right because you were expecting to receive from the Lord. 
And so germination took place. Mm -hmm. Life sprung forth out of that seed. That thought that had just sprouted is expounded by, it's fed by the same source it is originated by, the Word of God. You continue, that enlarges by continuing in the Word. Mm -hmm. The person continues to meditate and to develop the thought and it matures and bears fruit. So how do we know it's born? <coughs> the person expresses it and others become partakers of that fruit. So God gives the increase. Amen. The purpose of a seed is not to remain a seed. The purpose of a seed is for it to be planted so it can mature and bear fruit primarily for the sower to take, to partake of. What we first get from God has to be received in seed form. And then after a time of nurturing and maturing, fruit is produced. God cannot and will not receive anything from you that did not first come from him. Without God, we are only carnal. God had to plant his seed in us, and by his grace, we labor alongside the Lord to nurture that treasure that he put in us until we grow up into Christ and mature and to begin to, to bear fruit unto God. The only acceptable fruit we can offer back to God is a product of that initial seed that he planted in us. So he's the one that gives the increase. So now Brother Jeremy will come in and expound on that more. What we're talking about, to continue with what Sister Nikki just opened up, is the Word of God. This is not the Word of man. See? It's the Word of God. When it, it, when it is planted, it may not appear to be what it is, but it, it's working. It's growing. It's God's Word growing and working within man. God's doing this. Yeah. He's the one. He's given the power to give life. See, Men can't do this. They can't muster up enough energy to do this. It just can't happen. Life can't come from men. God gives life. It does not depend on men, but it depends on the power of God. It is God who gives life. When the Word is planted, when the Word of God, that's what we're talking about, the Word of God, when it's planted, it grows up Fruit unto life eternal. See, this is what the Word of God, the seed, God's Word, when it, 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 goes, it grows up to life eternal. That's what it produces in the end. That's what it produces. That's what we're, that's what we're looking forward to, the end result, the fruit. See, a farmer, when he plants, he's wanting to get fruit out of it. He's wanting I, I, does anybody plant and not expect? Or has anybody ever planted and not received what they thought they were planting? And been a little bit discouraged by putting all the work and all the effort into it and then having nothing. See, God's expecting a fruit here. Yes. Yes. Man's word, it cannot do this. It does not produce life. Men... They may be able to move masses of people and de because of their de deception. They can deceive people into thinking that they're going to provide something, that they're going to give something. But it's, it's all deceiving. They may be able to get or to make people believe a lie, but what we're talking about is what is it going to produce? At the end of the road, what is the fruit that's going to come from this? They cannot produce fruit of eternal life. That's at the end when it's all said and done. They can deceive people. They can lie to people. They can get people to follow them. But life eternal, that's not going to be the end result of the deception. Remember the serpent? He gave a word in the garden. He said, ye shall not surely die, Genesis 3, 3. That word was planted, and it did produce something. It produced death. It began to take root, and she looked at the tree, and in the midst of the garden, and it was pleasant. It was pleasant to the eyes. 
It was desired to make one wise. This was a word from the serpent. It produced something. But it produced death. The fruit was death. While you may not know that the word is working within you, God's word is doing a work within you. It's not a work that you can, that another man can muster up. It's this, this is a work that God's doing. We hear a word, then I'm talking about God's word. Like when we come together, we're, we, we're blessed by a word of God. We hear it. It's planted in us. And we go throughout our day, but it's doing a work. It's working within us. Amen. While the word grows, it can produce life or death. God's word produces life. See, this is why it's so important where we spend our time. Now, we've talked about this over and over again. We have to go to work. We have to be around the ungodly. We don't have to do it on pur you know, purposely go out of our way. We just do this because of our daily things. But we want to be very careful. Have our armor of God on. Be pre pre protect your ears and your mind. Always, lay, always protecting, always being aware that we're in a danger zone. And then we come together as brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, and we, we, we help the word grow within us. We, we, make the, we have an environment of growth for God's word. God's word produces life, and it only produces eternal life. God, it's, it's, it's work, doing a work within you. The seed is growing, and it's designed to do that. That's the way God designed it. Sister Nikki opened that up to us. God, God he made the seed to show us what he's doing. Amen. How would we ever know what God's doing in us if we didn't have an example that God went out of his way to, to show vegetation and seed and growing? What, ask somebody who's so smart. What, why do we have the seed anyway? Why do we have... Was it because of a big bang? That's why we have it? No, there's a reason. See, God, God doesn't do anything without a reason. It doesn't just happen. Come on. It doesn't just happen. Everything has a reason. If you, can't, if you don't know the reason, it's because God has hidden it from you. God can open up your eyes to show that the reason I did this is to show you this. The reason I made this was to show you this. And it's all connected to my salvation and what I'm doing for eternity. Everything's connected. There's not a f When people scratch their head and say, well, it's really interesting, but I really don't know why it's there. That's because God hid it from them. You know, you know, we, all, we all can say this. I mean, there's a time where different things, we just, uh, when we're children, that's what we do. We say, uh, Journey, just recently, he was doing this to me. Dad, why is this? And I tell him, Okay, they, that, hopefully that's done with. Why? 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 He's just, uh, the whole room is filled with questions of why, 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 why. But he's learning. He's understanding. He's See, now the Lord's doing that with us. He's given us stuff to show us so that we can understand his ways and what he's doing. It's like the mighty oak tree. It starts off a little seed. But it, it's not going to produce anything else but an oak tree. It will never be anything else. You may want it really bad to be a coconut tree. You may get, you may just, you may even pray about it. You may hope and desire and really want this to be a coconut tree. But after you plant it, it's going to produce an oak tree. It will never be a coconut tree, no matter how bad you like coconuts. You may want to make some coconut produce, you know, can't cupcakes, but it's never going to produce no matter how much you want it to be. That's the way God made it, and that's the way it's going to end up, an oak tree. It doesn't matter what you want. You, know, you brother understand how, what I'm talking about. We live in a day where people say, well, this is what I want. I don't care what God wants. I want this. Well, see, the problem is it doesn't matter what you want. God made it to be like this, and that's the way it's going to be. It's not going to change. So we're talking about the Word of God. The seed is the Word of God. It's going to produce something, and that's not going to change. Now, there's other things that get planted in the people, 
and that's not going to produce eternal life. It's only the seed of the Word of God that produces eternal life. <clears throat> it will fulfill its design. It's designed that way to produce eternal life. You may not be aware of it, you may not understand it, but you know it's doing a work. It changes you. It works within you. The seed grows up. And it makes a change within the believer. Yes. When you see somebody that says they're a believer and they're not acting like a believer, well, red flags should go up right away because the Word of God does something. Amen. When it's planted, that seed, when it's planted, it produces something. And if it's not, well, there's a problem there. Let's just go back to the oak tree. If I, if I sell you some seeds and we plant them in, and then I come back 10 years later and we've got a coconut tree, I just gave you something other than an oak tree. Because <laughs> you know, because it didn't produce the oak tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, it doesn't change. See, the, that's how the Word of God is. When it's in you and it's growing, it's going to produce the eternal life. It's going to produce life. Men can make up a system to come up with ways, but it will never produce life. Although they try it, it's all in vain. When the seed grows up, we see what it was all along. Every good tree beareth forth good fruit, but the corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Matthew 7:17. 7, the word of God that is planted in a believer, when it takes root and it grows up, it produces good fruit. Amen. Amen. That's that's what it does. It doesn't it doesn't matter what people say. They can, make, they can make up excuses all day long, but this is what it produces. A seed that is not from God is corrupted, and it will only bring forth evil fruit. That's what we'll get. In the end, it will be cut down and cast into the fire, Matthew 7, 19. So it is important what we fill ourselves with. Amen. It's important who we surround ourselves with. It's important how we spend our time. It really is important. People may say, ah, it doesn't matter. God wants you out. Well, it does matter. Yeah. It matters. It makes a big difference. We see this, that this is not by chance. God has ordered it to be this way. If it doesn't come from God, it's not going to be good. There is no good in it. God's the one that produces good. It may look pleasant and desirable. That's the truth, brother. It may present itself to be pleasant and desirable. But it cannot produce good fruit. It would only produce evil fruit in the end. We see that this is not just an academic thing. Or everyone who calls themselves doctors and lawyers, CEOs, Men who are or see themselves as smart in this world, they, met, they would be all moral, upright people if this was just all academic. I have a man that I know. He is a very smart man. He actually he writes for the Joplin Globe. He writes an article for them, and he'll tell you that he's very smart. He took a test and showed how smart he was. He explained this to me. And... Because I'm, I'm talking to him about the Word of God, and he's trying to explain how I don't, I'm not smart. <laughs> and he is smart. And he is when it comes to memorization. I tell you, he does, he has memorized the Bible. He knows Scripture. When I'm talking to him about Scripture, he knows Scripture. But he also doesn't know what it means. <laughs> because he, when I'm talking to him, it's always twisted and backwards. Amen. He's always, it's, he's always getting it wrong everywhere, every direction we come. And he's eager to come out and talk to me every, day, every time I come there. But he's always getting it wrong. 
and I was reminded by him when I started preparing for this, is because you cannot get good out of bad. It doesn't matter. God is the one who opens your eyes to these things. You may be the smartest one in Harvard, but in the classroom of the Lord, if you don't have a heart for God, you're not going to get it. God will make sure of it. He'll blind you from these things. The seed, the word of God, didn't take root and grow up in people who they cannot see. That's the truth. If they've been blinded, they've been blinded by God. You can have a handful of seeds, but if you do, if it's not if it's not sown in the right ground, it's not going to produce anything. Man doesn't have the power to make it happen. This isn't really hard to see when you look at all the mighty trees around the world. How did they get there? Was it because the wisdom of man? God showed us that he does this. A seed came down on a fertile ground and it began to grow and it took root and it sprung up and we have these mighty trees all over the world. Without man, without the wisdom of men, God did it. Amen. It's not by chance. Yeah. It's a work of God. We have this seed, the word of God, that will grow up into the image of Christ. Brethren, God is doing a work within you. And as you continue to give yourself to the Lord and stay close to the Lord and stay close to His Son, Jesus Christ, and distance yourself from the world, He will do this work within you. Amen. The seed will grow. And we are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord, 2 Corinthians 3.18. So we can take heart in this. We can be encouraged and built up to know that this is the work of the Lord. We don't have to be worried about what the world is doing. We know the world's going to take care of itself. It's going to fall apart all by itself. We give ourselves to the Lord. And He'll do this mighty work in us that's going to give life eternal. The end purpose here, brethren, is that God's people grow up to be perfect in Christ. Colossians 1.28 the end purpose is for us to grow up into eternal life and to be with our Father in heaven. That's what this seed, the Word of God, does. We will be fruit unto God. He expects it and He's going to get it. Those who He has prepared, those who He has planted the seed in, those who He has his, uh, worked, He will receive fruit. Just as a farmer has done everything, to get a good crop, God is doing everything and he will get a good crop. Amen. When Jesus comes back, he will receive us unto himself. And where he is, we will be able to go to. John 14, 13. And we will be able to be a, a good fruit for the Lord. We will be his and we will be with him. And we will be able to enjoy the work that he has done. This is encouraging, brethren. Amen. Amen. This is encouraging to know that this is the work that the Lord is doing with this, in us. So I leave you with that, brethren. I, I was very encouraged myself and thankful to see that this, this word, this seed that God has put in you, this is a work that he is doing and he's continuing to do. And that as we continue to stay close to him, well, we're going to see fruit in the end. Thank you, brother.